Hmm, what is it? Is it a piece of glass? Yeah, it's a piece of glass. It's uh, my TV. It's a Shiba TV. Uh, I did a plus video on this, and I remembered in my VCR, my VHS Rewinder video, I said I'd do a video on this and my other stuff, so yeah, I'm going to start on this TV. These these starts will be later, yeah, as always said. I might do something for the Switch box, or I might just combine it into another video. But yeah, here's my TV. Uh, I think it's a, it's a 1444 AF. I think it is. Uh, I might check it. I don't remember well. But yeah, here it is. And uh, There's that makeshift antenna I made out of aluminum foil tape and a suspend board game. Oh, don't forget the paper clip. Yeah, that's very important. It doesn't work, it's mostly just for a show. Uh, I didn't actually do it regarding the plush videos, but I just I, I just want to do that. Like, There's actually an antenna mount right there, so perfect. But the analog cutoff uh, doesn't work anymore. So even if that did work, it, it wouldn't be able to do, it wouldn't work because stupid analog cutoff, I know. But uh, on the front here, you get the power button. Infrared receiver for the remote, power indicator. You got channel up and down, by up and down, you know. And it's got front composite inputs with a headphone output. Yeah, it's headphone output. Unless you're going to use an extension, I don't think it's a good idea, but whatever. Some people sit really close to the TV. Got stereo speakers. Um, you look closely, it's only that little bit that's a speaker, everything else is just designed. Same for the other side. But at least it's Stereo, and it's also model compatible. So you just plug in the model channel here, and it will bring the channel between the two speakers. It's still going to be mono, but at least it's between both speakers. Some TVs just have either one or the other speaker, depending on which one you put it in. And that's really annoying. I actually um, have a TV downstairs that does that, and I don't like it a lot. Um, here's the remote. I have to either buy it separately because when I got the TV. It didn't have the remote. Um, I got it from one of my dad's friends. It was just in his closet in the basement, and he wasn't using it. And he knew I wanted it, so he let me have it. And I had to go through some difficulty to get my dad to let me have it. But at the end, I got it. And then it was in storage for uh, the rest of the year, you know, a little bit after that. But And then I moved to the garage. But it's here now, and it works, and I like it. The remote, uh, you may not be able to see it on camera because this thing has really bad resolution, but you could see that it has a lot of scratches on it. Made in Thailand. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a remote. The CT847, a lot of Toshiba TVs had this remote. It's, it's just a standard, you know. Not every TV is going to have a unique remote because that would be annoying if you had to replace it, but yeah. It is a universal remote. I have programmed to work with my VCR. Only this one, not that one. That one's not programmed. Uh, guess I'll turn it on, because I don't really know what else to do. Or, you know, I can show you the back, actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you the back first, and then I'll turn it on. Yeah, if you could hear lawnmower noises outside, there's a landscaping group uh, doing along with my neighbor's houses. Just ignore it. But uh, I thought I managed to get the TV around, and uh, it was a pain. Not because it was heavy. I could lift it. It's just that there's such a small space. And it was pretty crappy. But yeah, here's the TV. Uh, it was also made in Thailand. Color TV. Made in October 2004. Uh, oh no, it's the model 14AF44. Yeah, so I got that thing wrong. Uh, it's a 14 inch TV. That's what the 14 means. There's also I know there's also 20AF44. That 20 inch screen. And I think there's some other models too. With various screen sizes, but whatever. Uh, down here are the inputs. Uh, these are some service production operators. I think that's some that's like vertical hole and stuff. Stuff that you wouldn't typically do by yourself in 2004. But over here is the inputs. It has component, but it's only standard definition. So don't expect to get 720p out of this. Um, here's the coaxial input that is currently connected to the antenna that doesn't work. I just like it. Um, here's the composite input. But um, yeah, these are actually the only two things plugged in. Then you got another input here. Oh, by the way, this one also has an S video input. So, it's S video, composite, component, and standard coaxial. And uh, this one over here, you can do both composite and component. So, if you want to do either or, you could do either or. See, here is the component. You got 
Y and P B and R, I think it is. Or PR. I don't I can't exactly remember. And you got standard composite with the audio inputs. On some TVs, some like newer TVs that share the composite component, the green one is also the yellow one. I have a TV answer that also does that. But on this old TV here, you can see that that's a separate composite thing there. Yeah. Anyways, I have your one with all that stuff that's connected. It's the switch box here. And yeah, all the inputs are here. Just one output. And that's going into the TV. The switch box actually has two outputs. So theoretically, I have to hook up one of these to a VCR. And the other input output can go to the TV. So while I'm playing something on here, I can record onto this VCR like... When I'm playing a game, I can record it, and then, you know, I don't have a capture card, so, oh, use the sensor bar there. Yeah, I guess those are just, um, and strangely, uh, the power cord comes out the left side. It's kind of unusual, like, typically they come out the back around here, but whatever. It actually favors me in the situation in which I'm uh, putting it through, so. I'll turn it back around, and I'll have to turn it on. Alright, got it back around, let's turn it on. Alright, there it's on. It's on video one right now. Um, it also, if you don't have the remote, then you can't switch the input. So if you like press this button, you can't go back to composite. It's not like an other TVs where you scroll down to the lowest channel, it goes to the composite. See? It just doesn't. So you have to have the remote or another remote or universal remote that can switch inputs. Or else it's just gonna be stuck on RF forever, which that kinda sucks. It's got video one. Video 2, which is the composite, composite slash component thing on the back. Video 3, which is the thing on the front. And then it scrolls back to color stream. This is if you're using the component option on the back, you put it into color stream, which is basically just component. Strangely, it's just not one thing. It's either no, you got video 2, which is composite, and then you gotta go to color stream, skipping over a video to go to component, and that's kind of weird. Like, so a lot of TVs don't really do that, but whatever, man. Then it goes back to RF. And video one's also for S video. Uh, I guess I'll just see here. Uh, just turn on VCR. You see that the switch box will detect the input. See? And there's the screen. Sorry for the scan lines. I, I don't I can't do anything about that. It's about my camera. And yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't really have a tape to play. Hmm. Might be able to get... Hold on, let me get the remote for a VCR. <sighs> I know I still do a video for the VCR later, but I kind of just want to show the video on the TV from a source. Because so you want to see something. The menu. I don't really want to show any tape right now because that's copyright footage, but... Okay, I'll, I might show copyright footage to my VCR video, but this is the TV we're talking about right now. Yeah, so you can see the video here. It's a nice and crisp, plus crisp as analog video can get, really. Okay, it's like, yeah, it's good. Like, I'm okay with it. Some people might be really pissed off about it, but I'm perfectly fine, and I don't really care. But yeah, okay, now I'll show the menu of the TV, which you press the menu button, which for some reason is also the enter button. That's kind of weird. And how has that thing with the channel up and down, value left and right, or also the directional buttons. I don't really like that. I like the channel buttons and value buttons separate. So strangely, it actually does have separate value buttons as well as this. So it's got two sets of value buttons. Yeah. So, so I prefer the separate buttons. To, uh, for the universal remote reasons. Because, you know, if you're like, trying to scroll up a menu, you might change the channel on a cable box. And that's just annoying. And yeah. That might be a problem with some sets, so whatever. There's no cable box up to this anyways. I mean, if I was using a cable box, I'd just use the remote that came with the cable box. Unless I could figure out this thing I had to get to work properly. Whatever. Here's the remote. Here's the menu. Which, by the way, you also need the remote to get to. Got picture. Contrast, brightness, color, tint, sharpness. No. What you would expect. Here you got audio, bass, treble, balance. It's got surround sound and stable sound. Don't know what those mean on the manual. Setup, which is just for the channels, which doesn't work anymore because it's analog and you got digital now. You have 
select the key, regular eh, antenna TV or cable. Then you got channel program, which will start looking for channels, which I guess I'll initiate, even though it won't work. Come on, start. Okay, it doesn't want to start right now. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, whatever. It doesn't work anymore anyways. You got added an erase for if there would be channels there, but it doesn't. So you got options here. It's just standard stuff. You got language, channel labeling, favorite channels, V-chip, block, timer. And this is specifically for the color stream, whether you're using a digital TV box or a DVD player, which I'm using neither. Strangely, there's no game option. Oh. Yeah, there's a TV. Um, I suppose you want to hear the sound, so I'll turn on my Wii so you can hear the sound of that. If it'll be detected, yep. Oh, it's loud. There you go. There's a TV. So you can see the video. Works perfectly fine. Uh, YouTube no longer functions. I really wish it did, but if I try to start up YouTube here, it won't work. See, Nintendo Wi-Fi yes, disconnected. Discontinued. It was like discontinued back on August 30th, 2017, or something. Maybe even earlier, but and no longer functions, and I I don't like that. But that's how the world works now. It's, it sucks, I know. All right, but yeah, I'm not gonna play any games. I just want to show you how it functioned. And uh, hope you really like, hope you enjoyed watching this video of me showing the TV. So yeah, see you later.